Hello everyone, this is Mike Fauché and today I'd like to do a quick video on setting up your own VPN using your QNAP NAS unit. I hope you enjoy the video and as always don't forget to subscribe. Hello everybody, um, today we're going to actually talk about setting up a, a private VPN using your QNAP NAS. It's a feature that's built into all, almost all NAS units, including Synologies and other competitors. But today we're going to talk about the QNAP specifically. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how to set it up, how to configure it, and then how to set up your clients so that you can access your network as well as tunnel all of your internet connections for privacy. Um, getting increasingly important to try and keep your internet communications private. So this is certainly one step in, in helping you do that. So let's get started. Um, first of all, I'd like to talk about what a VPN is and why should you use one. Um, for the most part, a VPN, um, virtual private network is what it stands for, um, allows you to basically securely connect to, in this case, your QNAP. So from being outside on your phone or your laptop, connected to public Wi-Fi or some other insecure um, access point, um, this allows you to actually connect to your QNAP device through a, an encrypted tunnel and basically run your traffic through it. And in, in addition to that, it also allows you to access things that are on your home network. VPNs can be done and set up in a bunch of different ways. Um, today we're going to talk about the QNAP because... Um, I think using a NAS is one of the better ways to do it. Um, some of the routers and such have um, you know, VPNs built in. However, they tend to be a little less powered. Um, they're a little underpowered, I should say. And they don't necessarily perform as well. Uh, that is unless you've got some high-end hardware running some kind of a firewall router of some sort. But for the most part, you know, your average off-the-shelf router that you buy at Best Buy's or someplace or Amazon is not necessarily going to have enough power to encrypt that that traffic for you efficiently enough to get your performance the way you want. So using the processor in the QNAP or your Synology or whatever else you have typically is a little bit more powerful and more efficient. But with that, let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to want to do is install the software. So what we're going to do is go over to the App Center and you're going to do a quick search for VPN. And here you'll see the, the uh, QVPN service, which is the, um, the QNAP version of OpenVPN. And, well, actually, it's a QNAP version of all VPNs, which contains uh, OpenVPN. So you're going to go ahead and install that. I'm assuming you don't already have it installed. Um, in my case, I've already got it installed because I've been using it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open. Um, you're going to actually hit Install and actually install it first. So once you get to this point, um, so we're going to click down here to Open VPN. And the first thing we're going to do is enable the VPN server. Um, the couple things it does kind of out of the box and you know as defaults is it sets up a range of IP addresses. And these are the DHCP IP addresses that are going to be issued to you when you connect through a client. So um, there's a range of, you know, uh, quite a range of addresses here and you can obviously tailor that down. But these are, these, uh, as I mentioned, this is the DHCP IP addresses that your devices will be handed when they connect to the VPN. It also uses a default UDP port and, and 11, port 1194. So here you can also set the maximum number of clients. So depending on the type of hardware you have or your needs, you can make that higher or lower depending on what you need. The encryption, we're going to leave at the highest possible, which is the... Um, high 128 bit and then um, here you can actually select an adapter so if you have multiple adapters on your system you can actually route it through there or if you're just using one you want to make sure that the the one that you're actually using is is the one that's it's defined because you have to be able to actually communicate and then this one's kind of important it says um, use this connection as the default gateway so as I kind of alluded to earlier 
Um, when you connect to your VPN server, uh, in this case the QNAP server, um, all of your traffic from your device, whether it be your iPhone or your iPad or your laptop, is actually all going to funnel through the VPN connection into your QNAP and then from there be broadcast to the internet. So basically your devices are point to point and the broadcasting takes place at, at your QNAP server. And then um, that is pretty much it. So we're going to hit apply. So I'm going to hit OK. So now my server really is, is active as soon as it completes here. So it's active and now the only thing I have left to do from this screen is actually download the configuration file. The configuration file will be used across all of your clients and just to be clear your configuration file does not contain any user or password information. It does contain a certificate to uh, provide for the point-to-point -point encryption uh, and it, it, it does contain things like your IP address for your your server, your uh, WAN connection actually, um, and a few of the miscellaneous other things, but it does not connect uh, contain any password or, or username. So you will need to download this file. Um, you only most mostly will only need this one for versions 1.1 or newer. It's a single file download. So go ahead and click on that and download it. So it takes just a second or so and now we'll have it available for us to install on clients which we'll get into a little bit later. Okay so from here we need to go to one more place so we're going to go over to privilege settings and here's where we're going to define who on your QNAP or who has accounts on the QNAPs that can access the VPN. Obviously the admin account by default has access but you want probably some additional users to have access. So here you simply click on add VPN. You'll see a list of your users and you'll see open VPN here. And so just check on the users that you want to have access to the VPN. Hit apply and they will now be allowed to use their user credentials, the same ones they use for their login, to actually access the VPN once we set up the clients. And from here, this is really all that we got to do. So let's go ahead and close this up and move on to the next section. Before we get too much further, I want to remind everybody that after all this configuration is complete and everything is done, you will need to create a port forwarding firewall rule into your into your router firewall. Um, certainly can't go over all of those combinations today, so you'll have to look up how to do a port forward um, into your own particular router firewall. Um, you're basically going to forward your um, outcoming WAN request to your NAS IP. So basically you're going to create a port forward rule that forwards outside communications to port 1194 of the IP of your NAS unit. And that's critical because in order for all this to work there has to be that connection. So when you hook up with your client from the outside and or your, uh, your client software from the outside and it connects up, it, it will know your, your WAN address, but once it hits your actual network, it needs to know where to route that to and where to connect up with the VPN server. And it does that through port 1194. So the punchline is you need to create a, a port forward rule that forwards port 1194 to the IP address of your NAS unit. Okay, the first client we're going to install is actually a Windows 10 client. Um, the installation itself is pretty straightforward, but setting up the configuration file is a little bit different. Um, it's not hard, but you got to kind of know where to put it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is download the software. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pick the Windows 10 installer, and we'll get that running here. Very quick install. And we don't need to see the README file. So we now have a complete installation. So let's take a look at the one thing that we'll see is let's go ahead and do OpenVPN 
GUI. It will launch the application, telling me I have no profiles. Yes, I understand I have no profiles. And draw your attention to the taskbar at the bottom where it's installed a, a program that runs on startup. It doesn't do anything unless you actually connect up to a VPN, but it is there for your convenience. Um, so now that we've got this running, the next thing is to install an actual profile. So let's do that. So I'm going to close the browser. And I've downloaded the um, OVPN file from the QNAP. Um, if you recall the last section, we actually clicked on down download configuration file. Well, this is the configuration file here. So what I'm going to do is copy this file. I need to put it in the configuration folder of OpenVPN. So let's do that. So let's go look at the C drive. It's right here under op OpenVPN under the programs file. So let's double click there. And we should see configuration. Um, and I'm going to copy the file here. Continue. And if I look at the readme text, it says um, this directory and its subdirectories should contain the op OVPN files. So. Um, that's basically all you have to do to install the configuration. Now when I click back down on this icon, it's going to give me the option to connect, So, which I didn't have before because there was no configuration file. And that's all I've got to do. So whether this is a laptop, desktop, whatever it is, this gives me the option now to connect up to my VPN um, when I'm on travel. Obviously on a desktop and at home, this isn't really necessary, but obviously everything that leaves the house, all mobile devices, your laptops, etc., um, mobile devices should have the client installed. So that's, that's really all you have to do for the Windows client. So next we're going to get into the iOS client. To get started with um, installing the client in iOS, you have to download the app. So you're going to actually go to the App Store and the, you're going to search actually for OpenVPN. And there it is. So we'll find it. And there's the app. And as you can see, I've already got it installed. So I'm not going to reinstall it. There's a variety of others. But the one you're going to want is up here in the corner called OpenVPN Connect. So uh, now that I that you have it already installed. Now we have to get that profile into the application because as it stands, it's not going to do anything by itself. So um, there's a couple ways to get the profile into iOS. One way is iTunes, which I find kind of cumbersome, but it is the most secure way. And you'll do that by actually adding the file, the uh, VPO, um, OPVPN file into the um, app section of iTunes under OpenVPN and it will sync it up to your device. I don't particularly like that way, but it does work. It is the most secure way of doing it. Alternatively, you can mail it to yourself, email it to yourself. Bear in mind that is less secure. However, the profile itself, the configuration file itself, does not contain a uh, username or password. So the risk is fairly low. But just be aware there is a risk. It is less secure and, you know, people just need to be uh, aware of it. So let's do that. We're going to go to the actual mail app. Now, I would suggest you use a uh, the native iOS app and not a third-party email app because sometimes um, attachments don't work correctly with third-party apps. So what I typically do, I'm an Outlook user, so I, I usually use that for all of my email. But for something like this, I'll actually go into the native app. So I'm going to tap on the OVPN uh, file and slide over, and you'll see that where it says uh, copy to op open VPN. So I'm going to do that. And it pulls up, gives me all the information um, about my profile. So I'm going to click on Add, and it's going to force me to use a username. So I have to at least put a username in. So for now, I'm just going to put the admin. would recommend against doing that. I would recommend you use one of the users. But for this example, I'm going to use the admin. And then I'm going to click on Add. I'm going to allow it. And it's going to ask me for Touch ID. 
and it's now imported. As you can see, the file is now imported. And if I hit this slider here, um, it's going to prompt me for my password and I'll be able to connect. And that's basically it. Um, once you, you do that to all of your iOS devices, um, as far as Android, um, I don't have an Android device that I can test this to, but it's a similar process. You can either use mail or they have other direct ways of copying it, so you'll need to look at the specific instructions. But the bottom line is all of your devices, um, whether it's a laptop, iOS, Android, Mac, they all have the ability to import this profile and allow you to connect up to VPN. Thank you everyone for watching the video. I hope you've learned something from it. I always look forward to your comments, um, any suggestions you might want on future videos. And as always, subscribe. please subscribe and set the notifications icon so you'll be notified of future content. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.